Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 14.4 homeostasis. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 14.4 you need to describe homeostasis and state the function of insulin. For extended you also need to describe the term negative feedback, describe the control of blood glucose concentration, outline the treatment of type 1 diabetes, identify the components of skin and describe how mammals maintain a constant internal body temperature. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. The word literally means staying the same and refers to any process organisms use to maintain the stable conditions necessary for survival. For example, whenever we consume carbohydrates, blood glucose concentration increases. In response, the pancreas secretes the hormone insulin, which stimulates the liver to remove glucose from the blood, bringing levels back to within a normal range. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on now to the extended content. Homeostatic control by negative feedback is a process that maintains a stable internal environment by reversing any changes that occur from the set point, which is an ideal value or narrow range of values for a given factor. When a factor deviates from its set point, the change is detected and a negative feedback loop is activated to return it. For example, the set point for internal body temperature in humans is around 37 degrees. Whenever temperature increases relative to this point, homeostatic Homeostatic mechanisms like sweating quickly bring it back down. Equally, if core body temperature falls below the set point, other mechanisms like shivering bring it back up. A negative feedback mechanism is used to control blood glucose levels. Whenever blood glucose level increases beyond the set point, for example, soon after consuming a carbohydrate-rich meal, the higher concentration of glucose is detected and the pancreas is stimulated to secrete the hormone insulin. Insulin returns blood glucose level to the set point as it stimulates the liver to remove excess glucose from the blood and convert it to glycogen for storage. When the body expends more energy, for example during exercise, Size, blood glucose levels fall, triggering the pancreas to secrete another hormone called glucagon. Glucagon causes blood glucose levels to rise as it stimulates the liver to break down some of its stored glycogen into glucose. The glucose enters the bloodstream and levels return to the set point once again. Next, you need to outline the treatment of type 1 diabetes, a chronic condition characterized by the sufferer's inability to regulate blood glucose due to a lack of insulin production by the pancreas. This results in elevated blood glucose levels, which can be harmful if left unchecked. Type 1 diabetes can be treated by regularly monitoring the blood and injecting insulin whenever blood glucose levels are too high. It's also important for those suffering with the condition to maintain a healthy diet as refined carbs carbohydrates and sugar cause large spikes in blood glucose. In addition, exercise helps to reduce blood glucose levels by increasing the rate of respiration in the muscles. Next, you need to know how mammals maintain a constant internal body temperature. This is essential for their survival as enzymes that control the reactions in cells only function properly when temperature is kept within a narrow range. When internal body temperature deviates from the set point at around 37 degrees, thermoreceptors in the skin detect the change and send electrical impulses via sensory neurons to the brain. The brain processes the information and then sends impulses to effectors, for example the sweat glands, which carry out the appropriate response. Thermoregulatory mechanisms include insulation, sweating, shivering and adjusting the diameter of the blood vessels, that is vasodilation and vasoconstriction. In cold conditions, fatty tissue in the skin acts as an insulating layer to prevent excessive heat loss from the body Body, and hair erector muscles contract, causing skin hairs to stand upright and trap a layer of air between them. This air acts as an insulator, reducing heat loss. Conversely, in hot conditions, hair erector muscles relax, allowing skin hairs to lie flat. This promotes unrestricted air circulation, which increases heat loss to the environment and helps to cool down the body. Whenever core body temperature increases, sweat glands in the skin secrete sweat, which evaporates from the surface of the skin, taking thermal 
thermal energy with it. In contrast, when it's cold, the body responds by shivering. The muscle contractions of shivering help to generate heat energy through respiration, raising body temperature back towards the set point. Finally, body temperature is regulated through a process that involves the widening and narrowing of arterioles that supply the skin surface capillaries. When we feel hot, these arterioles vasodilate or widen, resulting in increased blood flow to the skin and heat loss through radiation. Conversely, when we feel cold, the arterioles vasoconstrict or narrow, which reduces blood flow and limits the amount of heat loss from the body. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 14.4 homeostasis. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 14.5, tropic responses.